Hello, my crafty friends. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Linda Edwards, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator with Crafty Here and Designs. And I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful Feel Better Soon card. The magic of this card is it highlights both sides of the designer series paper. So if you have a paper as beautiful as this one, which is from the Perennial Lavender Suite, you don't really want to hide one side or the other, right? I mean, they're both beautiful. So um, this is a great card that I was inspired by Carol Sanderson, who I saw her do this for the first time for this layout. And I just thought it was beautiful. So I'm going to, I'm going to bring it to you. We did it in class in our, uh, what is this? In our March class. And um, it was a big hit. So let's go ahead and get started. We, um, this is the perennial lavender paper. I'm going to show you it is on page 23 in the mini catalog. And I believe it is carrying over into the new catalog. I think it'll probably be online only, but it is gorgeous. Every, both sides are just really beautiful. And so I thought this would be a perfect paper to highlight this technique. And I also really like these wanted to say dies. They come with, uh, this is the feel better soon, but it also has happy birthday, um, celebrate. There's some other kinds of little pieces. So you could do like a little flower. And then this is wanted to say. So um, they are retiring. So they will no longer be available in the annual catalog when it retires on April 30th. So if you like what you see, I would suggest you go ahead and get them soon. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to set this aside, set these dies aside. Well, I should say the feel better soon. What you'll see is it comes with a thin, uh, layer and a thicker layer so that you can, um, you get a nice shadow. So the card, <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. The card base, um, is actually the designer series paper and it's a piece of designer series paper that is six inches by five and a half inches. So if it's unidirectional, make sure that the six inches is going this way. Um, so you can get four out of a piece of 12 by 12 paper. And then you can't really see it, but it is scored uh, at a half an inch and four and three quarters inches. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna bring the four and three quarter inch this way and the half an inch that way. So that's your card base. Now, obviously the paper is too thin to just live just that way. So I'm gonna bring in two, I couldn't decide which cardstock to use, so I decided to use both. So this is just a standard uh, five and a half by four and a quarter, two of them. And as I said, I couldn't decide which one, so we're gonna use both. And this is gonna go in this way, and you can see this little piece is gonna get caught in between the two, and that way. And then I've got a piece of uh, just basic white for the inside so that you could write on it. Now you could just write on the crumb cake. It's a nice, you know, neutral color and it's light enough that you could write on it. But I thought the Lost Lagoon would be too dark. So that's why I put that in the back. And then this like, and this piece, uh, let me think is um, three and a half by four and three quarters. And I like this size because you can get five pieces out of a standard piece of cardstock eight and a half by 11. So, you know, it helps you save a little bit, helps your cardstock go a little bit further. Then I'm gonna decorate the envelope with, um, I haven't decided which side yet, maybe this side, maybe that side. This is a piece of six inch by two and a quarter, and we're gonna use this to decorate the envelope. And then I also have a couple of strips, and these are one quarter inch wide by five and a half inches long. And I actually have a piece of ribbon that's the same. It is it is a quarter inch wide just because it's the ribbon. And it's um, about five and a half inches long. And then a couple of pieces of scrap. This is what we're gonna make our sentiment from. The Feel Better Soon, which is the, um, the, the background, the Highland Heather actually has foam at double-sided, foam adhesive. This stuff is great. It's going to make it a little bit thicker so that it pops up really nicely on the card. They're called foam adhesive sheets and they're about six by four inches, I think. And they are double-sided. So I just basically took this, kind of decided how big I wanted it, right? And it is about, it's probably three and a half inches 
by about, or one in, maybe one and three quarters, two inches by about three and a quarter inches. Um, and I did the same thing with the, with a piece of the white. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go ahead and put some um, of the adhesive on the back of the white and show you how to do that. Now this one does not have the foam on it. This is just our regular adhesive sheets. And they come in a package like this. They're six by 12 adhesive sheets. And they come, you know, as I say, in the long pieces, and then you can cut them down. So I cut this piece down, um, and it's up, and so that it's going to fit on the back of that. And so this one is three and a quarter by one and three quarters. And you can see that I save all the little pieces because you can you can layer them. You don't you know don't throw any of that away. So it is double sided adhesive. Um, it's a little hard to tell because this piece was cut down. Um, it doesn't have like an easy way to separate them, but I really have found that it hasn't been a problem. So I just went ahead and opened it up. And what I like to do, so again, I've just got the one side of the adhesive that's coming off. I'm gonna kind of fold that under so that I can hold onto it. See that? My lighting's a little weird today. I don't know why. Sorry about that. A lot of shadows. Um, and I'm going to just layer that. I'm going to line it up here and then pull the adhesive out. That way it stays pretty straight because I'm being very frugal and I don't want to waste any of this paper. So there you go. And then, as I said, the foam is on the other. Okay, so if you are watching this video because you have the kit from my class, the thing to pay attention about is which side of the, oh, no, it doesn't matter because I already cut them out for you. But if you were cutting them out and doing it for a class, make sure that you cut on the right side of the paper, or even if you're not doing it for a class, because you know what? I have cut on the wrong side of the paper before. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my cut and emboss machine and cut those pieces. Again, I want to cut on the cardstock, the top of the cardstock. This one has the adhesive on it, so I'm going to lay it down there. And you could run them through one at a time or both at a time. And again, the smaller, see how they're skinnier, where it's going to see the cut lines, so that you know this is the die that's going to be the smaller piece. And this die, see how it's kind of thicker? This is going to be for the background piece. And of course, on here, it doesn't really matter if they're super straight we just want to make sure we get a good cut so i'm going to push that through and i am going to go through more than one time it should be okay oh sorry i'm moving the camera but um <clears throat> but i do the back and forth just in case sometimes it doesn't want to go through because especially this foam you know it's kind of thick all right, so I've got my two pieces and I'm ready to assemble my card. So let's bring this over and we're gonna start by putting this piece in here. So um, you can use you know, your adhesive of choice. I'm gonna just do a nice line of liquid glue. You don't want too much because you don't want it oozing out everywhere. I'm gonna kind of line that up that and fold it over so that I can see I don't want it to I want it to be right on the edge there there we go so make sure that it's all lined up and then I can come in here put a little more adhesive there and then just your standard kind of run that through like that and Bring it nice and close. And again, kind of watching so that, try to get this. Of course, if it was the same color paper, it would be easier because you wouldn't see it if it hung, up, hung over a little bit. All right, there we go. That is, that's all we have to do there. And then now for the little layers, I'm gonna bring in, let's see, I've got white. That's the inside. Lavender. 
Oh, there it is. Oh my goodness. So I'm gonna kind of cover up this piece. So let's go ahead and adhere this piece down. Anyway, this is the fold, the folded piece. Go ahead and fold that over. And then I'm gonna bring this and I'm kind of overlapping. So I can go ahead and do a bead of liquid glue on here and I'm lining it up to the end. I didn't get it quite thick enough, so then I'll add a second bead here. Like that. And they're just kind of right next to each other. Make sure I've got it down top to bottom. And then this last piece, um, you can either use glue dots or I find that the um, tear and tape works really well. So I'm gonna put it, bump it up as close as possible to that Highland Heather. And then just line that like that. <clears throat> and I am gonna use scissors just because I want Make sure that I get a good adhesion there. I'm gonna bring that like that. Make sure it sticks really well. And then, yeah. And I should be able to peel that off. There we go. And then I'll come in afterwards and trim off uh, the last little bit of the ribbon. It's a little bit, left it a little long. The reason why I'm doing it this way instead of wrapping it around is because, you know, I don't, I, I've only got one layer here, right? I don't really have another layer to bring it around. I guess I could bring it around the back, but I just didn't want it to show from the back. So um, the tear and tape is a good alternative. I don't like the liquid glue because I'm afraid it'll ooze through the fabric. So that, that works really well. And then you can take your inside piece if you wanted to add a sentiment, you could. I feel like um, a card like this, a feel better soon, you just kind of want, um, you just, I just wanted to have room to write a little note. A heartfelt note for my recipient. So there, and then the last piece is really just um, putting these together. So this, well, no, that's not the last piece. There's, there's a few more things. I wanna remember not to finish up, put that there so that I remember to put it on. All right, so now I've got the, um, the pieces already cut. So one of the beauties of this um, paper is that as you, in general, once you pull off the backing, it usually all just comes right out. Even the center pieces, the inside pieces come off. But that didn't quite happen that way. So let me poke them through. I don't really wanna get my scissors all sticky. So let's get my take your pick tool so that I can <laughs> see my scissors had the red on them. Coming from the back. I really should have done the, um, the white piece first, but that's okay. That's okay, I'm gonna set that aside. And then this piece Again, it comes out quite easily, and usually when you pull off the backing, all the little pieces come off, so you don't usually have to take a lot of time to, to get all those little pieces off. Just do what comes easily, and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so I really should have assembled, the, taken this one off first and put it on. It's not a big deal, it'll be fine, but I think I would have just, prefer to do it the other way. 
But again, not a problem. I'm gonna go ahead and just layer that on there. And now when I take the backing off, let's see if it's gonna work. If you don't have nails, the take your pick tool works well, even if you do have nails. But I find that it comes off pretty easily. Now you just kind of want to watch, see how they just kind of pulled, pulled all those little bitty pieces out. You do have to be gentle because it's pretty thin. So you don't want to tear your words. And what I like to do is I'm trying not to hold onto it too much, but I'm going to set the top, kind of line it up on the left and then lay it out. And it actually is really pretty easy. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of ribbon. You could tie a bow or a knot, whichever you prefer. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make this just a little knot, just a little overhand knot. And then I'm gonna cut it down on a little bit of an angle. That side and that side. See, I might need to make that smaller. And then add a little, add it right there. I think I wanna make that one a little bit shorter. And the glue dot. On the back side of the knot, you'll see that you've got kind of that back side, and this one lays a little bit more flat. So that's the side that I want, I consider my front side. And I'm gonna just, Put that there. And then I'm um, gonna bring in some of these little, little bit of bling. So these are um, Purple Fine Shimmer Gems. They've got three colors. They all look really pretty with this um, set. But um, I think I'm gonna take the light color today. I'm gonna put one up here and just add a little, you know, just something to add a little smile to somebody who's maybe having a rough time. You know, they've been sick or they had surgery or whatever. And then the envelope, I always like to decorate the envelope. I'm gonna use this paper. I think I wanna use, uh, maybe I'll use this side because I used the other side last time. And I'm just gonna add the adhesive to the back of the envelope. And I'm just lining it up where the fold is. There we go. And then I just come in and trim it down. It's that simple. But again, it adds a little interest. You know, we all have so much of this pattern paper that we love, but sometimes we're afraid to use it. I say use it up. Don't save it. There's always something even more beautiful that comes along that you're going to want to have. I mean, you know that, right? So use it. Let other people enjoy it. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I just love that paper. Such a simple design, but really a big impact. And I thank Carol Sanderson for showing me this card and... Um, I'm glad that I got to show it to you. So if you are, if you do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to help you unleash your inner creativity like Carol helped me and um, would love to, uh, would love to be a demonstrator for you. So you can find the links to uh, shop with me to buy, purchase any of these materials in the notes. Um, and um if you give me a thumbs up, if you like, if you comment, it helps other people to find me. If you share the video, if you have someone that you know would really enjoy learning how to make this card, I'd love for you to share it with a friend. And um, again, thank you for joining me. Uh, my name is Linda Edwards, and I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye for now.